Have you ever got completely obsessed with an idea and had to literally drop everything in order to follow it through? Well, my name's Mike Monday and that has just happened to me and thought it would be fun to record myself going through the process of actually following this idea to its uh, conclusion. Essentially, what I'm going to do is make an album as a result of this idea that I have. In fact, to call it an idea is probably not accurate. It's a number of different ideas that I've essentially uh, put uh, together. So here's what happened. My uh, process involves, my creative process with making music involves making at least one idea, which I call a splurge, every single day. At the moment, I'm making a lot more than uh, one uh, splurge a day for various different reasons, but at least one a day. And back on, here is my automatic music machine, which is my system for actually uh, tracking all of this different uh, music and actually getting it done. So... I've actually been in the middle of finishing uh, my uh, second album since coming back to making uh, music last uh, year. And I'm in the final, I've, I have been in the final stages of it. Um, but I'm still splurging every single day, new uh, ideas. Here you can see all the splurges I've done in the last few days. Anyway, back on the 6th of April, I did a splurge here. And it was called Midnight Oil. I just randomly named these things. I think I did it very... Uh, I think I woke up at like 2 o'clock in the morning and did this. Um, and this is what it was. And I remember, very specifically, remember not thinking much of it at the time at all. And what it is, is simply... I mean, it's an omnisphere sound, a... Uh, arpeggiator just going round a chord progression called a circle of fifths so it goes around all 12 keys and then I just added a rhythm on top Like that. That's it, basically. That's just the idea. Took me, you know, about 10 minutes or something. Just played that circle of fifths on an arpeggiator or an omnisphere and added an 808 rhythm uh, over the top. Didn't think anything of it. Bunged it into my uh, splurge folder. Didn't listen to it for um, a few days. And then came back to it and thought, oh, actually, it's quite nice. And so I labeled it as in play. So that was that. Then on another occasion, uh, I listen to a lot of podcasts, and one of my favourite is Seth Godin's pod podcast called Akimbo, which is about all kinds of things, a lot to do with marketing and getting your ideas out there and, all that, and building tribes and all that kind of thing. It's called Akimbo. Anyway, there is this uh, one episode called Synecdoche, and I'd heard this word before, but I didn't really know uh, what it meant. Anyway, the uh, definition of uh, Synecdoche on uh, Wikipedia it is that it's a figure of speech in which a term for a part of something refers to the whole of something or vice versa. So some examples are when on the news someone will say, the White House has decided this. It doesn't mean that the building, the White House, has decided it or that, or that uh, there is a person called the White House. It means, it means that... Various different people have decided this thing. Another example, it happens in sport a lot. It's like England uh, won the World Cup, or which very rarely happens, actually, but, <laughs> for, uh, or, or something uh, like that. Other uh, examples are uh, words like using suits for businessmen or uh, brass for brass instruments or, or the top brass for, you know, like the, the generals. Uh, things like that. This is all. These are all examples of synecdoche. And in uh, Seth Godin's uh, podcast episode, he was explaining synecdoche and how it's relevant for various different things. And one of the things he actually said, which is very true, is uh, about the whole idea of how we call ourselves me. You know, like so, I'm Mike Monday. But Mike Monday means all kinds of different things in different situations. Uh, I have lots of competing. Uh, 
uh, desires and different things that I do in different situations. I kind of become different people in different situations. I'm a very different person now than I am, for instance, with my kids, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so who is me? And that's a kind of really big uh, part of uh, my message and a lot to do with how I help people in their creative processes uh, as well. I mean, also, it kind of is relevant for us as artists. What is my music you know people often say you know i'm expressing myself what, what does that actually mean and i got very very uh, excited about actually making something about this particularly because i've always been another thing i've been obsessed about since i was a very very young child is the theme and variations form now this is a bit of a guilty uh, pleasure but w- when i was about six, my parents bought a vinyl, a a record called Variations by Andrew Lloyd Webber. This was back in about 1978. Um, And what it is, is a a theme in Variations. So apparently what happened was Andrew Lloyd Webber lost a bet with his brother, who's a cellist, uh, Julian Lloyd Webber, and so had to write this piece of music we were well, for uh, Julian Lloyd Webber and they recorded it and he took a theme a melody from Paganini and wrote this whole piece which was a bunch of variations and I was absolutely obsessed with this piece of music as a as a tiny little kid about six six years old in fact one of my most embar- embarrassing early memories was my parents catching me in the dining room, I put it on the record player and uh, catching me in the dining room, pretending to be a ballet dancer <laughs> to this record. I was absolutely uh, mortified, so, so embarrassed. And I think they'd been standing there watching me like uh, <laughs> do all this stuff. And I absolutely love this piece of music. I listen to it over and over and over and over, uh, over again. Um, you know, don't blame me. I was only six. <laughs> so anyway, ever since then, I've been... Uh, fascinated by the theme and variations form. And in fact, in uh, a lot of my music individually, my individual pieces of music follow the theme and variations form where there's a theme and then lots of different uh, variations uh, on top of it. It's a, it's a very yeah, useful kind of uh, form to to use because it kind of keeps the interest up, but you can still stick to uh, one idea. But anyway, ever since I can remember, I've wanted to make an album of theme and variations. And when I put together this, uh, what was called Midnight Oil track, with the idea of synecdoche, because obviously synecdoche, a part being the whole, you know, that kind of part and whole thing, it's the ideal word to use for an album, which is a theme and variations. So uh, on this uh, Seth Godin um, podcast, he also includes a, a mispronunciation. He said, you know, and now before I tell you about synecdoche, uh, here's a my favorite mispronounc- mispronunciation of synecdoche. And this is voice saying, sina kina dodi chodi, <laughs> which is which is really funny. It's just the way, way he said it is really funny. So I, so I took that just as a, as, a, as a kind of little thing and just put it over the top of this. Let's see if I can find it. I'll play you the most recent one. Here we go. Here we go. Come on, play. There we go. And I put it through a vocoder. Also, you know, my kids absolutely love it. They're hilarious. I've got, I've got four of them, and I've even renamed them Sina, Kina, Dodi, and Chody. <laughs> so we've we've all been about synecdoche in this house. <laughs> um, anyway, I've I've uh, even though I am in the closing stages of finishing the second album, what I've decided to do because I'm so kind of obsessed with uh, the music, I've also added a um, melody. To it, I'll, I'll, I'll make another video where I play you the uh, play you the whole thing. I've added a melody to it, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a theme and variations on this uh, melody with the kind of 
overarching theme of uh, synecdoche. And uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to document what I'm doing and how I'm doing it. So this video was just as a kind of intro to uh, tell you about where this idea came about, what it's all about, and why, why I'm doing it. My first step is going to be to put to one side the album that I was working on, because I can always come back to it. This is one of the benefits of my automatic music machine. There's no issues with picking things up again after a long break. In fact, it can be a, a, a real benefit. And just to focus on creating, composing, producing this theme and variations, the synecdoche theme and variations.